Welcome back. It's kid time at Golden Prairie Community Church, and I'm still Denise, and I'm still teaching you about God and the Bible. So, today I'm going to tell you more of a story about Joseph. Now, those of you guys who are here for summer kid time, you'll have heard about Joseph. So now you can see how much you remember. And those of you who aren't, you can learn something. Joseph was one of the children of Jacob. So we'll put Joseph on the timeline here. Jacob had 12 sons and some daughters too, at least one that we know of. Joseph was number 11 of Jacob's 12 sons. And he was different than his father. Remember last time we talked about how Jacob didn't know about God for quite a while? He knew about him, but he didn't know him personally. Joseph decided very early that he was going to follow the God of his grandfather and great-grandfather and father. And he trusted that God was good. I don't have a big word for you this time, just a short one. God was good. And Joseph had a pretty tough life, really, in a lot of ways. When he was still a teenager, he was about 17, he was kind of his dad's favorite, and that got his brothers mad at him. And they decided to get rid of him. I'm really glad people don't do this kind of thing very much in Canada these days. They actually even thought about killing him, which would be terrible, but they didn't do that. They instead just slow, sold him into slavery and sold him to be a slave in the country of Egypt, and they let him go off as a 17-year-old as a slave. Now, I'm sure Joseph was pretty confused about this, going, God, why are you letting this happen? But he trusted that God was good and that he was going to follow God no matter what. So he got down into Egypt, and he worked hard, and he was trustworthy, and he ended up being the head slave, the head person in his owner's household. His owner was named Potiphar, and he was pretty high up in the government. So he was a head slave in a big household, and that gave him a fair amount of priority in that society until his owner's wife lied about him, and he got thrown in jail. It was a lie. There was nothing he'd done wrong. He ended up in jail. And again, I'm sure he wondered, God, why is this? But he trusted God, and he did his best. See, God had a plan all through it, and Joseph was learning more and more and more about how to trust God. He was in jail for a while, like a number of years, and a couple of people out of the kings, out of Pharaoh's household, ended up in jail. And they had dreams. And Joseph was able to interpret those dreams. And one of those people got restored back into Pharaoh's household again. And as he was leaving, Jake, Joseph said to him, Don't forget about me. There's no reason I should be here. Tell Pharaoh about me. Get me out of here. And you know what? The guy forgot and left Joseph in jail at least two more years. That's a long time. By this point, Joseph was about 30 years old. And one night, Pharaoh had a couple of dreams that really bothered him, and nobody could interpret them for him. And then the man from the jail remembered and said, Pharaoh, I forgot. There's a guy in jail, and he interpreted my dream, and he was right. Maybe he can help you. So they hauled Joseph out of jail, brought him in front of Pharaoh, and Joseph said, you know, I can't interpret your dream, but my God can. And so Pharaoh told Joseph his dreams, and Joseph interpreted the dreams. And Pharaoh looked at him and said, you're a very wise man. You're going to be in charge. And so Joseph became second in the whole kingdom of Egypt. And what the dreams were saying was there was going to be a very bad famine. They were going to run out of food. There's going to be seven years of really lots and lots, plenty, and seven years that were really bad. And so Joseph sat there and figured out what to do. He ended up storing up grain for all those extra seven years. So he had lots and lots and lots of grain so that when the seven years of famine came, then they would have food. And they did. The people in Egypt did, and the people in the surrounding countries heard that Egypt had food. 
And so they started coming to Egypt to ask if they could buy food. And that included Joseph's family. So his brothers came and tried to buy food. And Joseph recognized them. He tested them a little bit to make sure that they had learned their lesson and that they were not going to do to their brother, his brother Benjamin what they'd done to him. But eventually he said, yes, I'm Joseph. This is me. Come bring the whole family down here. There's going to be years of famine left. Bring the family down here and come and live in Egypt with me. And they did. And we know that Joseph always knew that God had a plan for good. And why do we know that? Because he said so. After Jacob, their father, died, the brothers came to him and they were kind of concerned that Joseph might be mad at them still a little bit and uh, do them harm now that their father was gone. And Joseph said, no, no. He said, do not fear, for am I in the place of God? Am I going to have the right to judge you? Only God has the right to judge you. I'm not him. As for you, you meant evil against me. When you sold me into slavery, you meant it for wrong. But God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. You meant bad. God meant it for good because God is good. And you know, centuries later, the Apostle Paul who came after Jesus and who's teaching the people who are following Jesus, the Christians, said almost the same thing. In Romans 8, 28, he says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. God has a big plan, and things are going to work out for good in the long run. Because God is good. Joseph knew that. And he learned it more and more and more by experience. And we can too. As we follow God. As we follow Jesus. We experience and learn. And know not just in our heads. But in our hearts and by experience. That God is good. <music>